Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to this series of Learning Simplified. In today's uh, tutorial, we are going to have a look at the LIBOR transition. We all know that LIBOR is transitioning from uh, the LIBOR rates to SOFR for USD, SONIA for GBP and so on. So before we can understand the transition, it's important for us to understand what exactly uh, is the, are the challenges with LIBOR, how LIBOR is calculated and why uh, people have lost uh, faith in LIBOR. So first let us understand what exactly is LIBOR. LIBOR is a benchmark reference rate. Okay, it's an index rate. Okay, so just like you have a Sensex uh, rate, a Sensex which indicates the the uh, the how the stocks are performing in the stock exchange. So this reference rate of LIBOR gives you an indication of how the bank rates are moving. For example, if a bank has to uh, give a loan to a corporate, it just cannot uh, think of a rate in the air, right? It has to use a benchmark reference rate and then add a spread, add or subtract a spread over the benchmark. Coming to the, uh, uh, so once this rate is decided, uh, it is actually sent as a, defined as a rate code in the core banking and then uploaded. And based on the rate, uh, underlying the rate code, the, the loans um, uh, schedules are calculated. The full form, I think everybody would be aware that uh, LIBOR stands for London Interbank Offer Rate. Okay, so it was formalized uh, way back in 1986 after a series of discussions. So let us try to understand uh, how exactly LIBOR is calculated. It's actually very simple. So each day, 18 international banks who are in the London uh, market, they submit their ideas of the rates they think they would pay if they had to borrow money from another bank on the interbank lending market in London. So the word they think is actually important because it's not exactly uh, something which has happened. It is their idea of the rate. So please underline the word they think they would pay because it's not exactly that uh, they have already paid for that borrowing. So we have this BBA, British uh, Bank Association, now replaced by the IC Exchange. So this uh, takes care of getting the inputs from the various banks, okay, uh, who will submit their rates and the top four and the bottom four quotes are removed and then the average calculated of the rest. So this is how the LIBOR rate is calculated. A simple example to illustrate this first further. So morning at uh, 11 a.m. London time, this question is asked to these 18 banks. At what rate could you borrow funds? Value to do so by asking for and then accepting interbank offers in a reasonable market size. Okay, so this is the question asked to all the banks. Now let's assume in our example there are only four banks in the London uh, interbank market. So these panels submits the rates. Uh, bank A submits one percent B is two percent C three percent and D four percent so the bottom and the top bottom top and the bottom quartiles are discarded so in this case A and D is discarded two and three the average is 2.5 so 2.5 is the LIBOR rate for the day and this red rate is fed into the various core mark uh, core banking uh, systems so this acts as the index rate based on which the calculations of the loan schedules are calculated So to make it a bit complicated, uh, we should understand that this uh, borrowing can happen in multiple currencies. So the LIBOR is actually quoted in five different international currencies, USD, Euro, GBP, uh, Japanese Yen and the Swiss franc, which is CHF. So this is the currencies and also they are calculated in different maturities. So for example, what would be the rate for USD for a one day borrowing or a Euro for a one month borrowing. So this creates this matrix for which the rates are published. So when you ask for a LIBOR rate, you should actually ask, okay, LIBOR for which currency and for which duration? Because the rate obviously varies depending on where exactly you are in the matrix. Problems with the LIBOR. Obviously, the most important problem is it's just a submission. Nobody actually has done a transaction. It's just their idea as to what they think they will borrow uh, money. So it's uh, kind of judgmental and people can make uh, mistakes in the judgment. 
a genuine uh, mistake. And then obviously there is a nexus of banks submitting cheaper rates just to make things rosy. So, so in 2012, a massive fraud broke out by, uh, uh, by a group of banks which actually manipulated the rates for their, um, for their, for their own advantage. So the whole problem of Flyver is that there is no underlying transaction based on which the rates are created. So this has um, caused a lot of lot uh, 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 a loss of trust among the uh, financial system, and this had led to an outcry, leading to a new rate system called SOFR. Now we should understand that LIBOR has got multiple um, um, transitions happening. One is SOFR for the USD, and uh, we have SONIA for GBP, and so on. Now that we have understood the problems uh, of LIBOR and how it is calculated, we will be able to appreciate how SOFR, which is the replacement for USD, is actually a breakthrough and actually uh, can help in getting back the trust of the financial system. Thank you.